There is. We're not going to use it, but there is a formula. I'm going to say we're not going to use it. No, there's a reason we're not going to use it. There's a very good reason we're not going to use it. Yeah, it's right there. 1 over sigma radical 2 pi e to the negative x uh, minus v squared all over 2 sigma squared. Yeah, exactly. Easy. Exactly. Piece of cake. Got it. I had to look at it because I couldn't remember it. It's because you're old. But that's because I'm old. Ooh. And because nobody ever uses that anymore. Here's why. Here's why. Here's, here's a number of reasons as to why we don't do that. It's complicated. No, it's not too complicated. It's actually very simple. All you have to do, all you have to do is plug that number into that formula and the y value would come out and tell you how high it was. Here's the catch, though. So, like, the number could be 5 or 10. It could be, well, it has to be between 0 and 1 because it's a probability, right? It's a pro That's why that 1 over root 2 pi times sigma is there to make it between 0 and 1. So, it has to be a probability, so it has to be at least 0 and at most 1. But the kicker is let me ask a question. You guys know the answer to this already, right? How much of the data, let's do it in color. Can I take these off? Is that okay? Okay, I'm going to start using those colors again. No, I'll use yellow first. How much of the data is between that and that? Oh, I should see. Can't see that. Can't see that. Red. Perfect. Ah, unison. There you go. How much of the data is between negative one and one? 68% roughly, right? Now, that's a number that we empirically arrived at in class together about five weeks ago. I actually gave you guys some data sheets of data that I had found in research that was normally distributed, and we counted the data, and it was discrete. But in continuous data, how do you know that? Well, here's, here's how you have to know that. The first thing we know, can I, can, may I write this mathematically? Yes. See if you like this. If you don't like this, we can write it differently. What is the probability <coughs> that we pick a z-score between negative 1 and 1? 68%. Is that OK if I write that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's not, we'll write it in words. What's the chance a z-score is within one standard deviation? Let's do it that way instead, okay? How about that instead? Is that, is that, is that fair? Mm -hmm. It means the same thing. It's just easier to write this. It takes up less real estate. Do you guys have a preference? Words versus symbols? Symbols. Symbols, symbols. symbols okay? Or, yeah. I'll, leave this, I'll leave the words on the board for right now. But we'll, 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 we'll default to the symbol. All this means is if I randomly select any z-score on this axis, what's the chance I select one between negative 1 and 1? What's the chance I select between negative 1 and 1? Obviously, it's more likely to take negative 1 half than negative 1, right? Because negative 1 half is higher, so the likelihood is higher. So would that just be the 16% of Yes. Now, thank you. Yes, it is 60. We know the answer. My question is, where did that number come from? Well, right, but that's chicken egg. How did I know that number was there? I never proved that to you, did I? I never proved that to you. So where did that number come from? Karen, please. If we could, thank you. If we could. Why couldn't you get the y axis up there? You find that number multiplied by. Okay, what you're describing is called integral calculus. Well done. And that's what you have to do. In order to get those probabilities between negative. Let's get a, a better question. Remember the chance of me getting at least one rooster in the little box when Max bought four birds? Was one in three, right? Remember that's what I told the guy at the store. I said there's a one in three chance. Of, how the hell did you figure that out? Well, the chance of no, no roosters at all is 65.61 percent. That means the chance of getting three girls and one boy, or two and two, or one and three, or zero and four, has to be the other one third. And I added those probabilities up, right? You still have to add probabilities here. But do you see the problem? Here's the problem. Let's start with negative one, shall we? That's the probability of negative 1, correct? What's the probability? What, what's the next number over? This is a trick question. Give me one. What's the negative, 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 negative 0.5. That's too far, right? That's here. Which has that probability, yes? 
But aren't there things between negative 0.5 and negative 1? Keep, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You see the problem? The problem is, actually, it's, it's what, Taryn, you nailed the idea. The idea is we have to go into that curve and figure out the height of every possible value of z. The catch-22 is there are infinitely many of them. So here's a crash course in Math 252. For those of you who are going to take integral calculus, crash course. No, no, no. See, it's even easier. It's geometry. The way you deal with infinity in calculus is this. You take this negative 1 to 1 and you break it up into a small number of finite regions. Say, for example, they're all 100 of a unit wide. And you draw little tiny rectangles up there. This is going to start looking familiar to you guys, actually. Like this, right? And you go until you're done. You add up all the areas of those rectangles. And that's an estimate of what the area is. Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. And if you want more precision, what do you do with the rectangles? Make them skinnier. And what you do is, one of the biggest concepts in Math 251 is the idea of a limit. Make them limit so that they're not rectangles anymore, but lines. And what you eventually end up doing is drawing line after line after line after, well, it's purple now, after line and you end up shading the whole thing. Shading the whole thing is the same thing as adding probabilities in the discrete case. You you've have added, but you've added an infinite amount of things together. And that's called integration. That's what Math 252 is. There's a whole course devoted to it. That's a crash course. And the smaller you make those rectangles, the better they fit, right? The better they fit. It's kind of like doing a puzzle that has to fit inside of a case. If you get it right, it fits perfectly. If you get it wrong, it kind of fits, but not perfectly. If you could cut the pieces up and make them any shape you want, they'd fit perfectly. That's what calculus is. Making the curve fit. I saw a hand go up a couple, couple seconds ago. Who was it? Ron, was it you? Go. Are you going to make it? Are you just easier way to Oh, hell yeah. In like <laughs> two minutes. Yes. So you know, you know this is 68%, right? You know it's 0.68. Taryn, go. the equation doing Yes. The equation tells you how tall the rectangle is. That's why I said it looks terrible, but it really isn't. The equation just tells you how tall the rectangle is. You, you pick the width, and you plug in the middle of the number of that range, and it tells you how tall That's all. It's tedious is what it is. It's tedious. It's not hard. It's te you guys have found areas of rectangles since you were tiny, right? You probably calculate. If you have to paint like a room in your house, you want to do two coats of paint, and you have to figure out how much paint to buy? I'm sure you've approximated the areas of your walls to figure out how much paint you have to buy. After you didn't do it the first time, you did it the second time, measure twice, cut once. You always do it from now on in. It, it's the same thing. You find the area of the wall. How much paint you're going to need? 68% of 100%. Oh, speaking of which, where's the 100% over here? You know what? Take that question back. I recant that question. I recant that question. Let's hold that question for a couple more, a couple more minutes. So, you, you know what two standard deviation looks like, right? Mm hmm. Oh, this, this lid was off. Oh, it works. So, if we go from here, to here, you know that's. Are you sure it works? Kind of. I'm going to pull this over to the side. Oh, God! I'll <laughs> ah! just take some from one and put it in the other. It's all good. It's all good. That's 95%, yes? So using symbols, I don't write purple, I want the blue. We now know that this, if I can do a symbol, is that okay if I do that? Yep. That's about 95%, yes? Now what's cool about that is, I'm going to draw some, some lines mm -hmm. because that purple didn't work very well. What's right here? How much is right there? Wouldn't it be the difference? It's not filled in? Well, assuming I filled it in correctly. <laughs> it's a difference between 68 and 95. So you know this is 68, right? This chunk in the middle, 68%? Exactly. Yeah. The, everything is 95. Take 68 away from 95, and that's 23? 27. 27. Thank you. 27, right? 27. Now, 27% means this plus this is 27%. That means each of those has to be 13 and a half percent. Does that make sense? Yes. Very little math. 
Although Aaron asked for more, more, more math, so I forget we do some today. Right? No, it's 13 half percent of all the data in the curve. Of all the data. Now, there is still 5% we haven't talked about yet, isn't there? Remember, this is 95% between here and here, yes? 13 and a half plus 68 plus 13 and a half is equal to 95%. Where are the 5%? The the tape. That's where your outliers live. So how much is over, can I use yellow now? How much is over here? 2.5%. Two and a half. 2.5 over there. And how much is over here? There's your entire curve. Now here's the catch. Where does that 2.5 stop? Never. Never. It's like kind of sing something. I like that very much. It never stops. It goes on forever. So that 2.5%, technically speaking, includes 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way up. Andre the Giant, right? He's out here. He's in that 2.5%. He's actually in a much smaller percentage. He's dead too, but rest in peace. Say that again. Acromegaly, that's what you Oh, is that what is his condition? Yeah, he probably is a wonderful dude, but always in pain. And, and then, again, extraordinarily short, extraordinarily tall, average. Now, the reason for those percentages is because the formula that governs the curve tells us they have to be that way. Now, Taryn, the way you calculate them is, and I, I put a page on the arithmetic page about this, or actually explain the breaking up of the rectangles into smaller and smaller pieces. But that literally is how Davidson was just in here. He's, he's taking Matthew 52 right now. And I mentioned it's a Riemann sum. And he's like, oh, it's a Riemann sum. A Riemann sum is making the rectangles and adding the rectangles up and then letting them get skinnier and skinnier so they fit the curve better. Now, Andrea, you look terrified. We're not going to be doing that. Okay. We're not going to be doing that. Grab your TIs. There is no calculus prerequisite for this course, is there? No. Therefore, I don't expect you to use calculus in this course. But I do expect you to be able to get these areas. So let us. Let us, we're gonna start, it's the normal. This is our new program. I gave you distraw and disfill. Taryn, yes? I guess I'm, we know it's 68% because it's a bell curve, but we assume that from the discrete, but you have affinity that goes out forever, so how can you assume that that's 68%? Because we're tapping it at negative one and one. We're letting those tails go off forever. Can we come back to that question for an example? Sure. I, I love that question, it's a great question. I wanna come back to what the, pro the program will help us answer. That's okay. So, friends, here we go. Here we go. Grab your programs. Start up the normal. Okay, mine's number six. When you press enter, now, these are words I've invented. Forward and backward problems. We, we're not going to do any backward problems right now. Aww. We're going to do forward. Backward problems are some of my favorite. We're going to do a forward. So go ahead and select forward. Would you like to shade area between or left or right? Well, so far we've only done between. Mm -hmm. So let's pick between. It asks for a left bound and it asks for a right bound. Let's do one standard deviation first. Negative one for a left bound. Enter. Positive one for a right bound. Enter. It will now draw you a bell curve. It will shade you the area. And it comes back with the area of 0.6827. Nice. This is my gift to you, Riley. This is my gift. What's the matter? Say that again. Can I see? You should have to, it should change it automatically for you. I don't want it to be automatically. I did you a gift, you spit on it. I just I don't like to see the negative if I don't need to see it. Pardon me? What negative do you see? Down there that's negative. That's my zero. But I had to make room to put the text. <laughs> I had to make room. Now, Riley, you will like it. I promise you this. You will like this more when we start doing backwards problems because I put the Z scores, whether they're positive or negative, on the left or right side positive. So you will like it more. I promise on Monday you'll like it a lot more. And you're welcome for your Christmas present early. Thank you. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's all good. Now, watch this. Watch this. Do it again. More props. Just keep pressing enter. Whenever it's got this little fancy symbol up here, it means it's paused. So just keep pressing enter. Let's do, once again, a forwards problem. I want to get to Taryn's question, too. Let's do between two standard deviations. Negative two to two. Why does it make it difficult? Because it's a TI. Talking to me? Hashtag talking to me. <laughs> look, look, 95.45 is not exactly 95. It's a little bit more. The actual numbers that get you closer to 95%, believe it or not. Run it again. Run it again. More props. 
forward three. between negative 1.96. Oh, no. Yes, just, just go all the way through it and then come back, Joanne, to 1.96. The only reason I'm doing this one, friends, the only reason I'm doing this is because I want you to see the number that gets you closest to literally 95%. Whoa, mine doesn't matter. Right? 2 to negative 2 is close, but it's a little bit too much. 1.96 is a very special number in the world of statistics. It actually gets you as close as you can to exactly 95% with two decimal places of accuracy. Hmm. File that away under, might use that someday. Would it be the same than if you did that under the one, like if you did point To get exactly 68? Yeah, I'm not sure what the value would be, but yes, the answer is yes. And that's where the function comes in handy, if you want to do the function. Now, Taryn's question. Remember how we did, let's do, let's do a couple more. Let's do a, more props forward between, let's go negative 2 to negative 1. Oh, yeah. You already did that one? Very good, very good. Negative 2 to negative 1. What? Now, we did this one earlier, didn't we? Look what the answer is. 13.59%. Didn't we do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's only focusing yeah. on the standard normal. Dude. Yes! It's all, this is why it's close to the normal. It's drawing the normal curve for you to put zero in the middle, and you're giving the areas based on that curve. Any other curve can refer back to this one. That's the point of next week. Huh. Now, Sandy? What if, what if is That's next week. Because the middle almost never is zero. Yes. I just want to make sure we can get this from. Once we got this, we can convert it to get to this. Oh no, me too, me too. And we can make anything else be these numbers. Shut up. Shut up. Let's do negative three to three. Shut your mouth. No. <laughs> negative three to three. Let's do it, Faith. Here we go. Looks like the whole curve shaded, doesn't it? Yeah, why? Except it's not. Why is it not? Because, math. because the tails go off forever. It's because of the hashtag. There's extra. Be hashtag because math. The tails don't touch at negative three and three. Remember back in the day, we everything was approximately about sixty-eight percent, about ninety-five percent, almost a hundred. Ninety-nine point seven three is just about a hundred percent. But there's still the extreme outliers in the tail. Now your TI resolution is too poor to show them. But there is stuff that goes out here past negative three and past positive three. Right. Taryn, this goes back to your question, right? Um, you forgot your question now. No, I remember my question. What was your question then? I don't see how it's answered my question. Oh, wait, give me your question again. I thought it did. We're assuming that there's 68% in the middle. We're not assuming. We're letting the math happen. Okay, but the calculator's telling us that. But it's doing the same math I described to you. If they go out so far, how do you know? Oh, like, negative like, one to one doesn't go out yeah. so far. It five stops at negative one, it stops at one. Five is one. But the percentage is for accounting for all of it. Between negative so, one and one. The, the value is between negative no, one and one, right? I'm saying like 100% of identity. Ah, okay. So, so what Taryn has just brought up is there are, there are limitations to your technology. I see what you're saying. I think, Taryn. Do it again. If I go between negative four and four, which will look exactly the same as negative three to three, because the window doesn't show that far, still not 100%, right? I, I get why. No, 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 no. But the problem is, is that the TI is doing the same math I just showed you on the board. It's doing it quickly. It's going in and evaluating that function at every value between negative 1 and 1, which is technically an infinite loop. What about union? Technically. But if you get the rectangle small enough, you don't have to do the infinite calculation. If all you need if it's not exactly 60. I've never said it was. I said it's approximately sixty-eight percent. Since day one, we said that. Yeah. I put equal sixty-eight. Because you know that. Because calculus. Because calculus. This is why you need calculus to answer this question, sister. It's it's. Now check this out. You ready? Can you do it? The area goes on. The area goes on infinitely, right? That's mind-boggling, isn't it? But that's what calculus allows us to discover. It's a seeming paradox, but it actually isn't. It's mathematically provable. You guys need to take calculus classes out Yes, you do! I can't do the calc in here past the attic. But you said you're frustrated. That's okay. It's okay. The calculus class often has people looking just like that in it for the first couple of weeks when they're like, ah, uh, this whole idea of a limit. Do you remember in 105 when you guys timed me going down the hill on the bike? Right. And I said, how fast was I going when I crossed the 200 foot mark on the tape? You let the time increment shrink to zero at that moment. Although you couldn't actually let it shrink to zero. You let it get really close to zero, yeah. right? It's, 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 
It's asymptotic, but you never actually let it get to zero. You're doing the same thing here. You're shrinking the rectangles down until they're almost zero width, but not quite. But you get so close that it's okay and close enough to get the answers that we need. If I needed 15 decimal places of accuracy, I better use more precise rectangles. But if I only need four, I can use rectangles that are 1 one hundred wide. Calculus, baby. Calculus. Hashtag calculus. Good stuff. Don't forget to do that. That's right. I gotta do this first. Do this first. Thank you guys. I took you two minutes over. I'm sorry. More of this on Monday, yes? I'll get you guys some good quizzes for next week, too. And if you're not here because of vacation, of course, you can always submit from a distance, yes? Yes.